cross, in all honor and in all thanksgiving and in all glory of who you are, God. We come and lay down our burdens, our worries, the cares of this world at your feet, Lord Jesus. For you said that if we come to you and we lay out all our burdens on you, God, you will give us rest. So during this time tonight of worship, in this time of intimacy with you, God, we just come and lay it all at your feet and exchange all that worry for rest. Do you thirst for a drink from? 
But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show his immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Next slide. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. There is so much packed into this passage, and uh, to be honest, guys, I probably rewrote this message like five or six times. Um, there's so much that we can go into that, honestly, I'm just not going to. And um, I really encourage you guys, as we're going through Ephesians, uh, to read the book yourself and then go through it with us. But at the very basic level, let's just make a few observations about what Paul is doing. He's really presenting two pictures of life. And later on in the book, he'll refer to these as the old life, or the old self, and the new self, or we would call probably the true self. On the one hand, we have this life that is hollow and empty, defined by our own mistakes and our earthly desires, and enslaved to the ruler of the power of the air. That's his way of referring to the devil, the enemy of God. And then on the other hand, in the, the new life, what we have is that we've been made fully alive with Christ. And not just fully alive, but raised up and seated with him in the heavenly places. Recipients of these immeasurable riches. And Paul makes this crazy claim that this new life this is the one that we have. This is the life that we are to claim for ourselves. But the only reason why we have this life as opposed to the old one, the hollow one, is for one reason and one reason only. Grace. God's grace. It's because God has been gracious to us. You've been saved by grace. Now, that's probably for most of us not a new message. And guess what? It actually wasn't a new message for them either. If we were to look back in the Old Testament, we would actually see that this message, that God is gracious, that God is the one who has brought us to the life we have, this story was baked into the story of the Israelites in the Old Testament. Can we get the next verse up there? In the book of Deuteronomy, God is talking to the people of Israel and he says this, it was not because you were more numerous than any other people that the Lord set his heart on you and chose you. For you were the fewest of all people. It was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath that he swore to your ancestors that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. You see, sometimes I think we think that, okay, after Jesus, then our whole it, it was perception of God changed. And in a sense, that's true. But in another sense, this nature of God, that God is a gracious God, that it is because of God's power and grace that we have what we have, and we are what we are. That was a central part of the Jewish story. And so what Paul is doing is he's taking that narrative and he's saying that's not just for the Jewish people, it's for all people. It's for Jews and Gentiles, 
the radical thing of what Paul was saying was not that God was gracious, but that his grace was more expansive and inclusive than what we had previously come to understand. And so, from the beginning to the end and throughout the scripture, we get this picture that a core truth for us to embrace as the people of God, as our true selves, is this, that we have all been given God's grace. Can I put that up on the screen? We have all been given God's grace. And now this, of course, applies to those situations from the, this, the liberation from Egypt and also the, of course, Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross. But it's even more than that. And the, the writers of the Bible picked up on this in, in the Old Testament. And, and go ahead and stay on, on this slide because I didn't put the other verses up there. But like the next chapter in Deuteronomy, God is talking to the Israelites and he's saying, hey, when you get to the promised land and, and you're basically in abundance, don't say, oh, it's by my power and my might that I, that I got this wealth. But remember that it is the Lord who gives you the ability to make wealth. And then later, in the New Testament, Paul, the guy who wrote Ephesians, he's talking to um, people in Athens in, in Acts 17, and he says that God, who made everything, he gives all people life and breath and everything else. And then, of course, in the very beginning, in Genesis, when God makes the first human beings, it says that God breathed the breath of life into us, into Adam, and he became a living being. What we see throughout the scripture is that everything we have, our talents, our abilities, our health, our mental faculties, even the very air that we breathe, that all comes from God's grace. All of it is a gift. All of it is a gift. And I think, I think we all know this, but sometimes when we're moving so quickly, we just don't pay attention to it. And so, I actually wanted to even take a moment right now for us to pause and for us to reflect and to just be present. There's so much that times that we're just moving from one thing to the next. But if we were to stop and to just breathe. And I'm not gonna ask us to try and get anything, God, try to have God speak to us in any sort of way. No, it's actually just just about being present. Because when we stop, when we cease, when we stop moving, what happens is that we become aware of God's presence that is all around us. And that it's not based on anything that we're doing because we're stopping. take each breath, that's God pouring out his grace on us again and again and again and again. So I'm actually just going to invite us right now to pause and take a moment in the service. I would just like to invite us to close our eyes. on our breathing, taking a deep breath in, and then a breath out. Inhale, and exhale. And if we, if we need something to focus on, I just invite you to 
focus on your breathing, and as you breathe in, that just imagine you're breathing in the Spirit of God, the breath of life. So let's just take a few moments to do that, and then I'll bring us back. We say thank you, God, for every breath that you give us, for being the source of our life, and for covering our lives with your grace. All of us have been given grace. Thank you, God. Let's come back. So, again, if you've grown up in church, chances are this is not a new idea or a new message that you've heard. And yet, probably for a lot of us, there's just this disconnect between the truth that we hear in Ephesians from Paul and the reality of what we experience in our everyday lives. You know, Paul, he paints these two pictures of the old life and the new life, and he makes it sound like, all right, old life's done, it's all the new life. <laughs> and yet, how many of us in our lives would probably say that, man, there are days when it feels like, it feels like I'm living in the old life. How many of us would say there are days when it doesn't feel like grace is that presence? And I think it's because there's just a truth that just because everyone has received God's grace, grace, it doesn't take away the suffering. There is still pain and there is still suffering. And I think that if we were to be honest with each other and to really see what was going on within each and every one of us here in this room, Chances are that we would see that there is a lot that each one of us is carrying. That there is a lot that is going on inside. I, I, I do this sometimes, and I did this yesterday as well. And uh, especially when I'm feeling kind of stressed or anxious, which I was this week. I took a journal and I, I just sat down and I just wrote down everything that was going on inside. Wrote down everything that was filling up my headspace. Everything that 
was weighing me down. And it tur turns out you could write down a whole lot of stuff. And in fact, <laughs> I'm not going to read all the specifics, but just to give you a flavor <laughs> of what some of the stuff I was writing down. First, I just started writing down all of my work responsibilities. That took up a whole page just by itself. Um, I wrote down, uh, honestly, feeling quite nervous about today and uh, what I was going to share today. Honestly, this message did not come together until like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> different people in my life that I know who are going through things. There's a lot of them. A lot of people are going through things. I wrote down things about wanting to figure out things about my finances. I wrote down wanting to exercise more and then lose weight. I wrote that down, Mom. <laughs> I wrote down I wrote down wanting to date more and to find someone. I wrote down uh, getting a little bit stressed out that I, I actually have to find a new, a new trick. I actually found out that, I don't know if this, they make these tricks anymore. <laughs> I wrote down, I wrote down a bunch of stuff. I wrote down, also I need to clean my room. <laughs> and uh, that was actually the one thing that I, I ended up doing afterwards. I'm like, okay, that one I can handle, I can do that one. Well, honestly, I, I, I bet that you'd be like me, or many of you might be like me, where if you sit down and just write down all the things that are going on inside, and then you look at it, you might realize that is a lot that I'm carrying around inside. That is a lot of weight that I'm putting on my shoulders. And what happens when we live that way, when we live with a tremendous amount of weight and responsibility on our shoulders is it makes us really it makes it it makes it really difficult to see God's grace in our lives because we move into oftentimes we move into like a survival mode of just I got to keep going because I got all these things that are piling up and I, and and it's almost like if I take a breath then that's time wasted, and I'm not going to get to all these things that, that need to get done, and all of them feel urgent. And so, when we're moving too quickly, we miss out on being aware of the grace that is around us all the time. Now, some of you may actually be different than me, and you'd be like, man, Michael, you know what? If I were to sit down and write down that list, It'd be a short, like, half a page. I really don't have too much going on right now. And that might be true, but I'm also willing to bet that even if the actual, the number of things that we have going on might not be that much, that there's a lot of thoughts going on inside, thoughts that might be weighing us down, thoughts that we're carrying with us. In fact, there might be the thought that, you know what, man, I'm not doing as, as much as I should. I'm not, I'm not doing all the, the, the things that Michael's doing in his list that he wrote down. And I have to say that, that those thoughts, those um, accusatory thoughts, and that can weigh us down just as much. And in fact, I think that some of us, with all the things that we have going on, we actually might not even realize it all. Because when we're moving so quickly, we just we know that there's a lot that we're carrying, but we, we, we haven't even sat down to name it all. And so for me, sometimes when I do this, and I almost my eyes become open to be like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of stuff. And so now I'm going to in a moment invite us to another moment of reflection. I'm gonna give us another few minutes in silence. And I just want to invite us to open ourselves up and to ask each, each one of us, ask ourselves, what's going on inside? What's filling up my headspace? What are the things that I keep coming back to over and over again? What are the things that I 
think about at night that might be keeping me up. I think it is important, and I don't even want us to go yet to the point of, all right, and what do we do about it? That'll come in a moment. <laughs> but first, I just want us to sit with it and to name those things. Because until we name them, uh, naming is the first part of step to healing. So let me just invite us into this next moment of reflection. To just open ourselves up and just ask yourself a question. What's going on inside? What am I carrying? What is the weight that might be on my shoulders? Let's take a few moments and reflect on that. Take another minute. Jesus, I just pray that your presence just be felt by each one of us here exactly where we are at. You see us, you know us, you see the details, you are here. with 
having to admit our own limitations and powerlessness. And in fact, later on in another letter, Paul, he'll say that, that God told him that grace is sufficient for you because God's power is made perfect in weakness. See, God's power, we're able to see it manifest so much at the point when our power comes to its end. But when, when we're holding on and we feel like, no, it's, it's our responsibility, then it's, it's almost like we're closing ourselves off to really experiencing that grace. And so, of course, like many messages, this is coming back to the point of the invitation is to surrender and to let go of control. Which, again, probably not a new application that we've heard before. But, you know, I was thinking about it, and I'm like, what does that actually, like, really look like? <laughs> because, to be honest, I'm like, I don't even know if I can really will myself to surrender or to let go of control. Two things that I've observed that I'll share about what this could actually look like. One is just becoming, making ourselves vulnerable. That's one thing. That we might not actually be able to fully let go or fully um, release the things that we're holding on to, but we can admit when we're at the point and it's like, you know what? I need help. I can't do this on my own. It's almost like the, the stories that you hear in the Gospels where, where people see Jesus coming by and they, they just cry out, Lord, have mercy. Son of David, have mercy. That getting to that point of just being like, I can't do it on my own. I need help from the divine here. The other thing that I've experienced is, is actually doing what we did in the beginning of the service, or the message where we take time to refocus and recenter ourselves on God's grace by actually intentionally ceasing in our striving, ceasing in our, in our efforts to make things right ourselves. And when we actually take a moment to pause, to breathe, to soak in God's grace, it changes us. I want to share about what happened to me a couple weeks or maybe a couple months ago. I was, um, there's a lot going on at work, and I was, I was feeling pretty stressed. And then I started feeling um, this sensation in my teeth, and my teeth started hurting, basically. And I got really kind of freaked out. And uh, it, it kind of slowly progressed over a few days. And then it got to the point, I'm like, okay, I got to see the dentist. <laughs> Um, and then all these things started playing in my head of like, it's a major infection, or maybe it's a big illness, or something like that. And then I called the dentist, and they're like, oh, we're booked through December. And I was like, oh my gosh, what? And it was a work day, and I just, I was sitting there, and I just could not focus on work. And I was just, I was just not in it. And I was... I was, had all these just crazy fears and lies coming in, and, and I was just sitting at my desk, and I was trying to work, and I just couldn't do it. And I just got to the point where I'm like, I can't do this. I really need God's help. And so, and, and I just really felt like God was saying, take a break. Walk into the other room, go sit on the couch, and just be with me. And so I went and I, for probably 10 or 15 minutes, I just spent time refocusing and recentering, breathing, breathing in the grace of God. 
And yes, my mind was going a million miles an hour the whole time. <laughs> but just that act of stopping, of ceasing, there was something that happened there. The other thing that I did is I, I did call, I hope I can say this, I called Lindsay Ogawa. <laughs> and uh, I asked Lindsay to pray for me because I knew that I, 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 had, to, I had to talk to somebody. And through that time of centering prayer and through the prayer with Lindsay, I just felt like God coming over and saying, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And, oh, by the way, my teeth are fine. <laughs> I went to the dentist. And uh, it turns out I just needed a major, major cleaning. So I just want to say, if you haven't gone to the dentist since before the pandemic, really encourage you to do so. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> but more than that, for me, that was the act of admitting that I needed help, admitting that I just couldn't do it on my own, and then taking that step to just soak in God, so just to be, to know that I couldn't, couldn't work this out on my own. And then what actually happened a couple of days later is I had a chat with a coworker, and they started describing to me that they were sitting at their desk and that they said they'd been feeling this way for a while and they just could not focus and they just couldn't get their work done and there were all these things going on in their head and it was just so frustrating because they just couldn't will themselves to make it better. And in that moment I was like, oh my gosh, that's exactly how I felt that day. And I, I actually believe that maybe God put me through that experience so that I could be with this coworker in a deeper way, in a way that, um, that he needed in that time. And so, look, coming before God, admitting that we need help, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to all turn out, that God's going to fix it the way that we want. We don't know that. There's no guarantee that I can give about the outcome of each of the circumstances that we have going on. But all I can say, guys, is that when we truly make ourselves vulnerable, when we come before God, laying out the things that are weighing us down, He will surprise you with how good He really is. He will surprise you with his goodness. And guys, God is better than what we give him credit for. He's better than what we give him credit for. And I don't know what that's going to look like for you in your situation, but all I know is that God is good. And you can trust him. And we can be safe with him. And so... As we transition now into our time of response and worship, I want to just invite us to, to ask if maybe one of those steps that I, I mentioned, the admitting maybe that we need help, or maybe it's just soaking in God's presence, that maybe there's an invitation for some of us here. And if not, that's fine too. I realize that not everyone might be going through the same sorts of things. But if that is you, I want you to know that, that God is here and that we can open ourselves up to Him. And maybe it's admitting it to ourselves, too, that we need help. And maybe it's admitting it to someone else. So I am going to remind us that as we head into this time of worship and response, our prayer team will be in the back and they can, they can pray with you. So let me just close this time in, in prayer. And then after that, feel free to use this space, use this time, however would be best.
has for you. Let me pray. God, we affirm once again the depth of your love for us and the expansiveness of your grace for us. And as tall as the things that weigh us down may seem, God, you are greater than them. And Lord, I pray for each one of us here that whatever it is that we have going on inside, that we would experience your goodness today, this week, and going forward. May you help us to surrender. May you help us to trust you. We cannot do it on our own, God. We need your grace to even get us to the point of being able to surrender. And so God, on behalf of all of us here and on behalf of everyone who is crying out, we just say, Lord, would you have mercy on us? And we trust you, God. You are good and we declare that and we know that. So Lord, we offer you this time. Would you come and meet with us? Would you come and interact with us in the ways that we need? I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Lord, I just thank you that you are a God who transcends time and space, and uh, that you could be with here us here right now, and you could be with my brother 
where he is. And you can be with so many who need you in this moment right now that there are many prayers going up in, in needing of you and, and, and being comforted and encouraged and um, praying um, people who are sick and needing you, God. And um, So God, thank you that you're a God that meets us uh, wherever we are and uh, that you're never too busy for us, God. Thank you, God. And, um, Lord, I just believe that there's power in prayer when we come before you. And I thought, oh, man, if there's just, there's a few of us that come together. It's so good. And, and if we can come here as a church to be together, everybody in this room would be thinking about my brother. And uh, that you would, uh, there would be an intervention. So I pray, God, I lift him up to you. I pray that he is not feeling alone in this moment, that he would know that you are with him and that you are, you are, um, have always been by his side and that there's a freedom in you, God, and there's grace in you, God, that as long as we come before you and we confess whatever is in the heart of our heart, you will hear us and you will meet us. And through, and through Jesus Christ, we have been born again, washed clean, and we can come before you and we can be in your presence and be loved and know that um, our identity fully lies in you. So God, I pray that over him and I pray that over each one of us and I would encourage anybody here who's going through something right now and is feeling um, an emptiness, um, or is feeling um, like things have just not been right or there's been a broken relationship or, um, or there's just been hurt, God, I, I pray right now for you, any, anybody in this room that they would come before you now too and they would be met by you and that they would ask for help, God. That's what I'm doing here. I'm asking for help. And I'm asking it from not only you, I'm asking for the body of Christ that when we come together that nothing can stand against us. And so I believe that for my brother and I believe that for like every person in this room that nothing can stand against us when we have a more woman in Christ. So I just want to read this out um, for everyone, for myself even. And it's Ephesians 1.18. And I pray that the eyes of our heart will be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance as a holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every name that is invoked, not only in this present age, but also in the age to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So thank you, God, that you love us so, that you give your son, and that we can find our hope and grace is in him in which you've already done. Let us stand in that victory and let us remain in you. In Jesus' name.
just feel covered by your grace. And I just pray that all shame, fear, and guilt will just leave in the name of Jesus and that that will just dissipate within your presence, God. And so I just pray each person here can leave tonight feeling not only are you a God of power, but you are also our friend. And so I just pray for uh, comfort and I pray for your peace and your love to just surround us in this moment. And Lord, um, we just thank you for you and what you do and how you reached us tonight. Just pray this in your name, God. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. And just as a reminder, there will still be prayer people in the back if you would like to receive prayer. Um, so feel free to fellowship and just have a good night, everyone.